everyone, uh, welcome to the South Suburban Humane Society YouTube channel. My name is Haley and I'm the behavior coordinator there. Um, we actually had been talking about making educational videos for a little while now, um, but it seems like now would be a really good time to try some things out and see what you guys think. So um, we have a lot of dogs in foster right now. Um, so I figured a really good first video would be uh, marketing dogs on social media. Um, these are just some things that I learned from other shelters um, about matchmaking and um, what works on social media for drawing people in and um, getting them interested in the dogs that we have. So I'm going to talk about marketing versus adoption counseling, what the difference is and um, when to do each. And then um, going into a little bit about what matchmaking is um, and then stop sign language. So marketing versus adoption counseling. Marketing is to create interest, uh, make a connection and draw people into the shelter or just draw their interest in so that they are um, getting in contact with us about adopting a dog. Um, you want to, in a bio, almost create a relationship for them, um, paint a picture or tell a story um, of a dog that they definitely want to have in their house. Um, adoption counseling is more of a conversation, either done face-to-face -face or over the phone, to prepare the adopter for the animal that they are uh, bringing home. Um, this is where also kind of matchmaking comes into comes to play. Um, this is where they're going to gather information about um, the adopter's home, their family, their lifestyle, and then um, determine if that dog is a good or a bad match for them. Um, if they are a good match, they're going to uh, give adopters the tools that they need to handle things that they may have thought that they couldn't handle. So we may disclose a behavioral issue or something minor, um, even on a bio, and um, some people may automatically um, count themselves out of that and not even um, reach out when we could easily have a conversation and set them up to have success with that dog um, just by educating and um, just giving them whatever tools they need to uh, work through that issue. Um, so I love to use Baxter as an example. Um, he is a very sweet, loving, affectionate dog, um, but he gets extremely, extremely stressed out whenever he is in the shelter. Um, the way that his um, poor mental health shows um, is that he will jump and nip at uh, kennel staff when they take him out um, or when they bring him in back inside and he will also steal their leashes. Um, he just will grab them and not let go. Um, these are just stress behaviors and the more we get him out of the kennel, the more we give him extra toys and get him out to play, um, do mental and physical stimulation, um, he will, um, he gets more well behaved, but um, the best he does is out of the shelter in a home. Um, it's when he is at his lowest level of stress. So um, we definitely want to tell people everything about Baxter, um, but we're going, if, when we're marketing him, we want to um, really show all of the best sides of him. Um, so I was actually going to take his bio directly off the website, but when I looked, I realized that it um, is getting kind of old. It's probably at least two months old, so it needs an update anyway. Um, he's been in foster um, the past week or so, so we'll have even more notes to add. Um, but for the meantime, I wrote a little something up that I can um, then add the foster home notes to and then post on the website for his new bio later on. Um, but what I wrote was finding yourself with a little more free time lately. Are you getting outside more now that the weather is getting nicer? Wishing you had a little sidekick to tag along with you? Look no further. Baxter is a teeny little bully mix who really deserves his forever home. In the shelter, he has learned sit, down, and shake. He's a happy, lovable, motivated dog perfectly sized to fit into a small family. Set up an appointment to meet him today. 
Um, so counseling is where um, someone sees this bio and is interested in him and they want to meet him, so they ask about him. Um, this is where we would talk about the behavior in the shelter and let them know everything that we can about him, um, everything that we've seen. Um, and then we just want to steer the conversation back to, um, these are his notes from Foster and this is how he does when he's in a home. And um, bringing up other positives and saying his he's really eager to learn. Um, he has a really happy attitude all the time and he is just so stinking cute. So you wanna bring everything back, bring their mind back to um, the stuff from the bio and everything just absolutely great about him because there are so many things. Um, and just kind of remind them that, hey, this is still very much the dog that you um, came in here to meet. He's the exact same dog that we put on this bio. Um, it's just that there were some other things that we needed to talk to them about afterwards. So um, there's definitely um, more of a conversation to have with them, um, any questions that they may have about how to deal with these sorts of things. Um, and we can definitely have that conversation and um, kind of counsel them through that once they have um, all of the information and once they make contact with us. So stop sign language is anything that may deter someone from wanting that dog. Um, it can be really simple, subtle things that we don't realize, or it can be really obvious things. Um, no dogs, only pet, no kids, prefers women, um, disclosing a bite history. Um, some nice ways that we like to dress these up are wants to be queen of the castle or doesn't like strangers. Um, all of these things are definitely um, things that we want to tell people about. Um, we absolutely want to disclose bite histories. Um, we absolutely don't want to send animals home with um, kids if they aren't good with kids. Um, if they have quirks that they can be okay with certain people, but maybe they don't like men or some dogs don't like women, um, Anything like that, we want to disclose to them and tell them so that they know. Um, but we don't want to put that in the bio because um, it kind of just, we want to create um, really a good vision of that dog for them um, to start off with before we tell them anything that um, might make them a little skeptical about taking that dog home. Um, a lot of people may think that uh, medical concerns or medical problems that a dog may have um, might be stop sign language and um, for a lot of people that is going to be true but in other cases um, it actually can create a bond for people to an animal um, maybe they personally have the same health issue um, or they know someone or they knew someone or for whatever reason, they may have a connection um, and that may draw people in. So um, if you are fostering an animal or you do are writing a bio for an animal that has a medical issue, um, that can absolutely be an okay thing to add into the bio. Um, it's also kind of a little bit um, more straightforward than um, behavioral issues. Um, so there's really more so just like these are medications and stuff like that. So um, those are okay to include in bios. And some of the more common um, health issues that we do adopt out um, include thyroid issues, diabetes, cancer, blindness, deafness, um, heart disease. We do still adopt out animals with a lot of those um, considering that their quality of life is good. So some really good things to include are a dog's energy level. Um, one really common thing to include would be to call them a couch potato, which is great if they are um, our higher level energy dogs. I like to call them running buddies, um, things like that, where, um, or if there's um, a medium level dog, we can say they'll enjoy sitting on the couch with you or um, going for walks. Um, they like to switch it up or whatever. Um, just finding fun ways to dress that up, um, including their favorite toys or treats or activities. So just giving more, um, kind of filling them in with color and um, bringing them to life, make these dogs seem very real because they are real dogs. Um, we want to display that to people over the internet. 
Um, their training history, probably the number one best thing to include. Um, if we know that their house broken, um, including that, it's going to be a huge, gigantic plus for a lot of people. Um, but any training history that we know, um, if they've gone through any training at the shelter, if their previous owners did, um, anything that we know, including that, um, is going to be a plus for people that the dog has received training in the past. Um, and then including any commands or tricks that they already know. Um, I love including those, even if it's just sit. Um, people like to know that the dog has learned, the dog is learning, the dog is willing to learn. Um, and a lot of people really like getting dogs that already know the, the very basic commands that um, pretty much everyone's dog knows. So um, there is always a concern with transparency when um, talking about uh, leaving things out of bios. Um, but the truth is that we are going to maintain transparency. Um, we just don't want to start off with um, any of the bad things that people might, things people might see as bad or see as challenging with the dogs. Um, we want to focus on the good first. Um, everything in the bios are tr is true. Um, we're not putting any lies or um, little fibs or anything like that. Um, everything in the bio is a true fact about the dog. Um, and then once they come in, we're going to counsel in person um, and do matchmaking at that point. Um, so gathering the info about them and their lifestyle and then um, giving them either the tools that they need to take that dog home or steering them in the right direction. Um, the chances are we definitely have a better match for them. Um, and then in that case, um, sure, we didn't get the original dog adopted, but um, another dog didn't get adopted. So it evens itself out. And then say that um, these people came in and met the dog and then um, found out that for whatever reason, um, the dog isn't good with kids and either they have children or they have um, children over, they babysit or they have family with children. Um, so maybe they don't want to take that dog home, but they maybe they really liked the dog and thought they, it was a great dog and they know someone that doesn't have children. So they might pass the word along and say, hey, this dog's really great. They just um, recommend it isn't around kids, but that's not a problem for you guys. So um, even if that dog didn't get adopted, um, they are getting, um, they're meeting people and um, word of mouth can really travel a lot and, and do a lot for these dogs. So um, I hope you guys learned something from that. Um, I really enjoy um, talking to you guys about things and I like answering questions. So if you have any questions, um, probably the best way to contact me would be through email. And that's um, Haley, H-A-L-E-Y dot S-S-H-S at gmail.com. Um, if you have questions, comments, concerns, anything, um, feel free to reach out. I will answer you as soon as possible. Um, I really look forward to um, t teaching you guys more, um, sharing more information, and um, talking to you guys about whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, so yeah, thanks for everything. Um, feel free to reach out and stay safe out there.